That was the initial impetus for doing the film. But as we began shooting the film, there was this story of Misty's comeback. And this verite footage of, of a great athlete artist, if I may say that, you know, struggling to come back to their form. And so the, the film became kind of like this fun, you know, ride. And the truth of the game, we had no idea. Under Armour was not, when we started, that was nowhere in the horizon. Swan Lake was not on the horizon. So this was very much a, an exploration. It was very open-ended. Um, uh, and that's why there's so much there to take for this, because we were actually just kind of following her journey and, and seeing what, what, what happened. Uh, I want to thank Malika particularly for guiding us through all that verite footage, because we shot tons. There's tons of stuff that's not in here, believe me, hours and hours and hours. So trying to figure out what were the key moments to have in, what to leave out, and also how to negotiate shoot, you know, editing the ballet. And I think you did a fantastic job with that. Can you speak, all of you, about, um, you know, working with American Ballet Theater and um, sort of pulling the curtain back on that world, which um, is a difficult thing to do, and um, how that went? Well, there were challenges. Um, a lot of, I, I think, if you look at it, because Lincoln Center, those of you who know the ballet will know how expensive it is to shoot at any of the major institutions in New York. So you can notice a lot of footage shot in Brooklyn at BAM where we have some access. Italy, we have incredible access. We have some great access in Australia. So a lot of that was, both, it was great to have an international movie, and I think that makes the film stronger. Uh, but also, just getting access here in the States is very challenging because of the, the way union rules work, etc. Um, it's, the ballet world is, is such a niche art form, and so many dancers go through their entire careers and leave with no footage of themselves dancing. Um, and it's just kind of how things are. There's just not a lot of stuff out there that you can find um, in terms of performances unless it's done professionally for the company. Um, so, I mean, you have a union, you have to you know, deal with the orchestra's union, the theater's union, the dancer's union, so it's, it was extremely difficult for us to get a lot of stuff done because that's where everything is. <laughs> and I'm, I'm at the Metropolitan Opera House a lot, so there's a lot of footage that we wish we could have gotten, but we got a lot of good international stuff. That's one reason we wanted to do, and I want to thank Kickstarter particularly, uh, the footage of the, the My Dear Dance, particularly, was done primarily funded by a Kickstarter campaign that we ran. So literally, Kickstarter paid for that footage. We really wanted to have a really multi-camera showcase. Cliff Charles, who supervised that, is in the house. Thank you, Cliff. And, uh, to, uh, so we had, I think, eight cameras, Cliff? Six? How many cameras did you use? We got three and we uh, switched up. Oh, well, it looks like six. <laughs> but the idea of being able to really showcase Misty in the way that you might do a pop video with that kind of coverage and that kind of energy was something we really wanted to try and do. And I think we, we hopefully we succeeded. Yeah, that's it just beautiful. Do we have questions in the audience? Uh, yes, right here. Ms. D, you're such an inspiration. I'm wondering what advice you have for young people who find themselves like you in a place where no one looks like them and they're forced to be a trailblazer when maybe that's not what they wanted. What advice do you have for our young people? Thank you. Um, I never approached what I was doing as, you know, I'm going to be this leader and break barriers. Um, it was just, I'm really passionate about this and I want to dance. And I think that's number one, that every child, every dancer, whatever dreams they have, that should be number one for them. Um, to understand that it's so much hard work that's involved and to be in a career like this, you have to just absolutely love it because the work is so much more intense than, um, you know, getting out there and hearing the applause. <laughs> Um, but it, it takes a certain type of person, I think, to want to speak up and have a voice and be put in that position where you know you're going to be scrutinized. Um, and that's just something that I felt I needed to do. I was very scared once I really understood 
how rare it was to see a, a black woman make it to the level that I was at in a major ballet company. Um, I thought, I don't know if this is ever going to happen again in my lifetime, if I will ever see um, a dancer make it in the court of ballet or as a soloist with ABT. So this is my opportunity to speak up and, and represent um, African American dancers and share my struggles and, and open that conversation. <laughs> One of the most amazing people in the film uh, and is here tonight. I just want to give her a special shout out because she's so wonderful. And that is Raven Wilkerson. <laughs> Um, 
And so for the, all those reasons, it, it was a compelling story to, to follow through on. Being such a big inspiration as you are, how did you get through all the hardest times that you've ever had? Like how, which were the biggest moments when you thought you were going to quit? How did you get through that? <laughs> um, I think the, one of the first times that I really felt lost and, and I definitely considered quitting, I considered leaving ABT. Um, Arthur Mitchell from Dance Your Harlem had offered me a contract and I was very tempted. Um, and it was two women over here, Victoria Rowell and Susan Faleshill, that kind of. seemed like it was something that was attainable to me, seeing it through them. Hearing their words of encouragement was a little bit easier for me to relate to and accept um, because of the people it was coming from. Um, and from there, I just kind of became so open. I was just accepting all of this advice and help and all the incredible, amazing brown women came into my life and kind of just kept me on track. So. I would say one of, the, one of the real important subtexts of the films is mentoring. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, yep. And uh, and also the fact that Misty, both tangibly and as a symbol, is also a mentor. So it's interesting. This whole generational. I think I, I think most people would, would feel that one of the most powerful scenes in the film mm -hmm. is Raven and Misty together. And that generational connection. Is so intense, and it, it just resonates with us in our bodies when we feel that. Yeah. And I think that hopefully the film is part of the advocacy, it's part of the mentoring as well in its own way. <laughs>